this latest move out of the UK. What's your view? How does approving new licenses for oil and gas align with the goal of reaching net zero emissions? Well, uh, Dan, it's great to be with you. Um, you know, the IEA, which is certainly uh, on the vanguard and a leader uh, for the energy transition, puts out a technology report and just recently updated it in December. And essentially that report says we can get to about half of meeting our net zero commitments um, through wind and solar. The other half has to come from new technologies like CCUS and hydrogen that are not really commercialized yet, and maybe fusion I would throw in there as well. And so until they are ready, we have to keep investing in oil and gas and hydrocarbons. Otherwise, uh, if there's a, a difference in supply and demand, prices are gonna spike, we're gonna have a lot of volatility. And I think ultimately, the thing that we all care about is advancing climate policies and the transition I think that's at great risk because if the public starts to equate high prices and volatility with the transition, then I think we're in real trouble. So I think this is a, actually a, a very prudent move. We have to keep investing in, in hydrocarbons while we pursue the transition and, and uh, really uh, bring these new technologies uh, to bear uh, to help us meet our goals. Of course, there has been a lot of critics weighing in on this. The UN Secretary General said that Sunak's decision was moral and economic madness. These critics see it as a step back for the energy transition. You seem to disagree. Do you think it's a step forward for energy security, at least in the UK, though? Well, look, I think uh, expectations of a linear energy transition are, are a little shaken over the last two years. As climate uh, you know, uh, uh, priorities have to coexist with, with other priorities like energy security and affordability and, and energy access. And, um, and, and I think the reality of the situation is we can't go off oil and gas uh, today or tomorrow. It's, oil and gas are gonna be around for, you know, until 2050 and play a, a very large role. I think the, the key for, for policymakers is how do we reduce uh, fossil fuel uh, uh, demand, not the fossil fuels themselves. We have to focus on the demand because if we don't pay attention to the demand side, then we're gonna have price spikes and volatility and um, it's not good for economic growth. And ultimately, it's not good for public support for really pursuing uh, you know, climate policies and, and asking, fr frankly, very challenging things of the public in order to get there.